corner and our next guest is here to talk about the importance of setting rules for your kids about Halloween. So please welcome back Dr. G. <laughs> Again. Thank you so much. I love your practical parenting advice. But you know what? I gotta be honest. I never really thought about applying rules for Halloween. I mean, that's supposed to be kind of like just a night of fun. Why do you think we need rules? So we really do make rules, right? Where you're headed out and you think, oh, it's dark, you have to hold my hand, or okay. don't run ahead, right? We set up the rules as we go. Yeah. But if we think about Halloween as an opportunity to urge our kids to build on something we want them to improve on, then they will because they're highly motivated because they love Halloween. Oh, so it's almost it's like the tricking them. Sort of. Get it? But they get treats, treats too. They get treats too. Yes, exactly. <laughs> That's the thing. But no, yeah. you're saying that you can really teach them a lot about respect, which is the last time you were here, right. you were talking about yeah. your three books, which I love that are size of an iPhone, right. that teach respect and responsibility. Well, for example, if you have a shy child, this is probably the one night a year that they will talk to strangers voluntarily. Okay. Yes. Right? They will talk to adults they do not know to get that candy. Sure. So, <laughs> so if that's the case, if this is such a strong motivator that it would get a shy child over that shyness for a little while, we can teach kids the respect and the responsibility we want them to have so that they can have more of the independence they want on Halloween. So how does that dialogue go if you're teaching? You have okay. four boys I under have 12, four right? four boys, yes. <laughs> so and how do you have this conversation at home? Some of it is the prep, like costumes, right? Okay. Has, has Zoe decided what she wants to be yet? You know, I told them, I told them what they were going to be because oh, we learned here on the show. What's we had a great be. costume segment on the <laughs> oh, show and right. I want them to be minions and they agreed surprisingly. Oh that's excellent. Yeah. Right. But so a mom talked to me who's her daughter her eight-year-old wanted to dress up like Miley Cyrus. Ooh, okay. Right and yeah. so that's a conversation about respecting yourself sure. about the mom respecting her daughter's interests but also teaching her the self-respect and the suggestion I had was if you're not going to just say, no, you may not emulate that person, that you might say, okay, you may dress like an eight-year-old Miley Cyrus, but you may not dress like a 20-year-old Miley Cyrus. That's right. not appropriate. Right. right. So she's got to go back to the Hannah Montana days. Exactly. And okay. then she's welcome to dress like her. Right? right. That would be cute. There's okay. no problem there. So we want to respect our kids' interests, but we want to teach them self-respect and those kind of things. Okay. And what about uh, reverse trick-or-treating? We talked about that as well. We did. So since kids love wearing those costumes, and you mentioned, right, you've already put some money and time into those costumes, and two hours does not seem like enough bang for your buck take your children that afternoon or the weekend before to a senior center or a veteran center and give them the chance to hand out some treats show off their costumes and and just gather up those smiles right. and see how much just their joy and their existence can make people happy right because you've turned something fun into them but as a giving back moment you can give back that way you can give back also um, by collecting some of your candy for troops overseas okay there are some great programs to send non-melting candy sure. to troops overseas you know some of the people who are serving our country they were trick-or-treat Treating just a year or two ago. That's a good point, They're and that's a point people, that I think and they we get forget about. At Halloween, absolutely, this doesn't happen in other countries, you know. And so this is a nice way to teach our kids to think about others while they're gathering up as much right. loot as they can. What about the rules for that tween or that teenager who still feels like they can trick or treat? Well, sometimes they can, uh -huh. totally appropriately. But you know, what I with a tween, what I worry about: Does Zoe want to trick or treat by herself with her friends? Mm, you know what? She brought it up the other day, right? First time. <laughs> yes. And so we can, if you, as parents, we no. You just may not. But yeah. is it a chance to build a little resilience and some responsibility? Oh, I don't know. She might not be ready, but how, here's how you decide. You think, what am I worried about? And then you come up with the, maybe the three scenarios you think might actually happen. She's not going to get abducted by aliens. So <laughs> what you think might actually happen that you're worried about. And you okay. say to her, well, genuinely, what if you did and you got separated from your friends? What would you do? Okay. Or what if someone you didn't know invited you in to get the treat? Sure. Right. And if she has good, responsible answers to those questions, then you might say, you know what? For the first half an hour of trick-or-treating, you may if you text me every 10 minutes or so. Hmm. Right? Okay, Not the so whole time, but a little comfort for me and a little independence for you. And you say, and oh, and if you don't, your little brother and I are going to come up and get you from your friends. She will text you every third house. <laughs> like, don't you show up with me. You know? So right. there are ways to build independence. Teens want to go to parties. Yes. And Halloween parties can get a little out of hand. You can use the same what if game to build some resilience and responsibility, see if they're ready. Sure. But another thing you can do is say, no, I'm counting on you. Actually, you get to be home alone handing out candy. Or you can invite your friends to our house. You find ways to let them have some of the independence yeah, I like they that want. One better. Uh -huh. And say, and you know that other thing you've been asking me for to do over the break or something? I'm going to be watching your behavior on Halloween to see if you're responsible enough to earn that privilege. All right. Those are, those are some very practical rules and tips. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do about it after the break. More with Dr. G coming up in just a second. <laughs>